Hello friends of Dermatoscopy. This podcast is about flat pigmented facial lesions and we will analyze them with pattern analysis. The problem with flat facial lesions is that they may look similar although they have different diagnoses. It's difficult to tell them apart. This could be lentigo maligna, but it could also be pigmented actinic keratosis or lichen planus like keratosis. This could be lentigo maligna, but it could also be pigmented actinic keratosis or lichen planus like keratosis. And it's the same for this lesion. It could be lentigo maligna, pigmented actinic keratosis or lichen planus like keratosis. So when you're confronted with this difficult differential diagnosis, you may say that dermatoscopy is useless. Well, I don't think so. I think we made some mistakes in the past that prevented us from diagnosing these lesions with more specificity. And one big mistake was the term pseudonetwork. What we called pseudonetwork was in reality, or is in reality, a structureless pattern interrupted by follicular openings. Here you see a typical lesion with what has been called a pseudonetwork. We see a structureless pattern interrupted by follicular openings. The problem is we use this term for every pattern, but in fact we can see many different patterns on facial skin and the term pseudonetwork prevented us from seeing these patterns. We can see every pattern that we see on non-facial skin also on facial skin. For example, we can see a reticular pattern. In this lesion you can see obvious reticular lines between the hypopigmented follicular openings. Here is another lesion with a reticular pattern. You can see obvious reticular lines between hyperpigmented follicular openings. Here is another flat facial lesion with reticular lines. You can see obvious reticular lines between hyperpigmented follicular openings. We can also see a pattern of circles on facial skin, which means that you have hyperpigmentation of the follicular openings, and in between, in the interfollicular space, we have no pigmentation or less pigmentation. Also, a pattern of dots can be arranged as a pattern of circles when the dots are arranged around the follicular openings. Here you can see a pattern of gray circles. You can see obvious gray circles and you can also see that the interfollicular space is not pigmented. Here you can see gray dots arranged as circles which can also produce the pattern of circles. Of course, we can also have a pattern of dots when the dots in the interfollicular space are randomly distributed and when they do not form circles, then we have a pattern of dots. Here you see gray dots. They are evenly dispersed between the follicular openings. It's a pattern of dots. Here you can see gray dots in the upper part of this, lesions, of this lesion. The pattern is dots and not circles. We also have a pattern we call curved lines, or in the metaphoric language, fingerprint pattern. As you know, I do not like the metaphoric language, I prefer the descriptive language, but I never ignore the metaphoric language. Why? Because it's a teaching podcast. Some proponents of the metaphoric language ignored the descriptive language. I think this is not right. A pattern of curved lines or fingerprints in this solar lentigo. Of course, we also can have a pattern of clots or globules if we prefer. Here you can see a severe keratosis with a pattern of brown clots. Now, what is the significance of these patterns? Well, there is significance. The most important question is, what is the most specific pattern for lentigo maligna? And as you can see here from a study that was published in the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology, pattern of circles is the most specific for early lentigo maligna, which means small. Of course, if lentigo maligna progresses and the lesion becomes larger, we can see many patterns, including structureless pattern and so on. But if it is very early, the main pattern is pattern of circles. You can see in 30% lentigo maligna had a pattern of circles. Now, what is the most specific pattern of lentigo maligna? A pattern of circles. Which pattern is the most specific for pigmented actinic keratosis or pigmented intraepithelial carcinoma, which is pigmented Burns disease? Now, as you can see here, the red bars indicate the frequency of patterns observed in pigmented actinic keratosis, and you can see that P 
It means that a genetic keratosis may have any pattern. You can see pattern of circles, pattern of dots, pattern of reticular or curved lines, and structureless pattern. Pattern of clots or clovules is very rare. Why do you see so many patterns in pigmented actinic keratosis? Because pigmented actinic keratosis is a collision between a solar lens tiger and an actinic keratosis. And therefore, you can often see patterns of solar lens tiger in a pigmented AK. Now, which is the most specific pattern for solar lens tiger? Well, there are three patterns that we uh, usually observe in solar lens tiger facial skin. The structureless pattern, which has been termed pseudo-network in the past, which we do not use anymore, then the pattern of curved lines, and of course the reticular pattern. Why do you see a reticular pattern in solar lentigo? Because there is elongation of rater ridges on facial skin when there is a solar lentigo, and therefore you see a reticular pattern. Here is an example. You see a solar lentigo with a fine brown reticular pattern in between the follicular openings. Here is another example of a solar lentigo. Here the pattern is structureless, it's only brown, and there's another clue to the solar lentigo. You can see in the periphery here the sharply demarcated border, which is called moth eaten border in the metaphoric language. Now, colors are also important for facial lesions, and especially the color gray. You maybe know the heuristic gray is not okay, so whenever you see gray on a face, you should consider excision or biopsy of the lesion. Now, what is the accuracy of gray? As you can see here, gray is very sensitive, which means it is present in nearly every melanoma. The red bar indicates the presence of gray in melanoma. But as you can see here on the left side, gray is not very specific. Why? Because you can also see it in nearly 50% of excised or biopsied solar indigenous. So gray is not very specific, but very sensitive. Now, we also have some clues in uh, uh, when we do pattern analysis on facial lesions. What are clues? Clues will help us to diagnose lesions with more specificity. And I want to show you the clues to pigmented actinic keratosis because these are the most important. We have three clues to pigmented actinic keratosis. First, white circles. Second, scale. And third, four dots in a square, which in a metaphoric language are called rosettes. Here is a clinical example of a pigmented actinic keratosis. It's scaling, and here's the dermatoscopy. You can see the clue of scale, and you can also see here the clue of white circles. What is the pattern? The pattern in the lower part is structureless brown, but in the upper part you see a reticular pattern. Why? Because this actinic, pigmented actinic keratosis, like many pigmented actinic keratosis, is a collision between a solar lentigo, which corresponds to reticular lines, and an actinic keratosis. And this is the last problem we have to face, and a very important problem. Facial skin, there are a lot of collisions. We have collisions like solar lentigo and lentigo maligna, solar lentigo and actinic keratosis, and so on. This is a very important topic, but it goes beyond the scope of this uh, podcast and would be a good topic for another podcast. Thanks for watching.